Welcome to Fire Walk with us this week. We're talking about the Twin Peaks episode Double Play. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And Justin. All right, quick plot synopsis. Cooper and Truman discuss the opening moves by the fugitive Wyndham Earl over the discovery of a dead body in Truman's office, which is the opening move of a deadly game of chess where each pawn is ta- for, for where for each pawn that is taken a person dies. Cooper also confides in Truman about his past with Wyndham Earl and his involvement with Earl's wife, who may have pushed him over the edge. Following Leo's rampage and attempt to kill Shelley, he flees into the woods and ends up in a cabin uh, housing the shadowy Wyndham Earl. Meanwhile, Andy confides in Lucy about his antique suspicion involving little Nicky. Lucy then asks Dr. Hayward for help, who finally clears up the mystery about Nicky. Major Briggs also confides in Cooper and Truman about his work for the Air Force's classified search for the so-called White Lodge. At the Marsh Estate, James meets Evelyn's husband for the first time, who turns out to be a nice guy. In the nearby town, Dawn arrives with money for James and instead meets Evelyn, who tells her that James has left town already. Back in Twin Peaks, Big Ed confides in Dr. Hayward about Nadine dating Mike Nelson. Dr. Jacoby also uh, clears uh, Lana Budding of any misdeeds concerning the death of Doug Milford. But it takes some persuasion for the eld- um, for the uh, elderly Mayor Milford to convince him otherwise. Meanwhile, Catherine reveals to Pete that Andrew Packer is alive and they let him in on their plans to bring down Josie by contacting her former boss slash lover, the ruthless South African businessman Thomas Eckhart, who arrives in Twin Peaks looking for Josie. Also, Audrey and Bobby ask Jerry Horn for, con- for help concerning Ben's delusion, as he continues to reenact the Civil War, while Dr. Jacoby persuades Ben to push for a Confederate victory. <laughs> mm. Alrighty, so I took far more notes than usual on this episode. I say that. Mm. I mean, a lot of shit kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of really great stuff happens in this. Like, it's, it's pretty fantastic. So we open up with um, them yeah. taking the pawn out of the mouth of the dead dude. Yeah. yeah. And, we and find... he's pointing at the chessboard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we basically find out that it's Wyndham Earl who left the body there, uh, and that this is kind of like the, his opening move. His yeah. opening move is killing a pawn? Yes. Yeah? It's just an unimportant pawn. How do you... How do you open a chess game by killing a pawn? They can only move well, two spaces forward. Well, technically he'd made other moves before, but this is the first piece he'd taken. Okay, yeah, so, so he so was basically... Move as in first piece has been taken, and the main point of this game is sort of revealed of, this is more than just a game. Yeah, it makes Wyndham Earl quite clearly, A, it makes him the villain, and B, it makes us know that he's dangerous. Yeah, just a little bit. Indeed. So... Um, Aside from that, he's smart with everything, where yes. they couldn't find anything. Yeah. There's no fingerprints, no fibers, nothing. Just everything that he did, he was able to get in, get out, get them distracted, make sure that everything sort of went well and left nothing. Yeah. Uh, we have a scene with Audrey and Bobby, and I really like that pairing. They just have really great chemistry on screen together, and it's fun to watch. Not as it kind of sits, but... As it kind of sits mostly, I prefer Audrey in the scene where she's taking charge. She still has that attitude she's always had, but uses it in kind of a decent or enough sense. Where Bobby, in my case, is just kind of like, why are you on the screen right now? Get out! I really like Bobby in these couple episodes, in this episode. Um, Oh yeah, so we cut back to Shelly, who is being stalked by Leo. Yeah, a little bit concerned to <laughs> lock in her own place with Aquila. Or, well... Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. I have a bunch of notes. The first one is, Shelly's in the middle of some horror movie shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's fairly we then get a, with all we that. We then get a cut outside that shows their house, and it's just, like, bathed in, like, red light, and it's just really, really cool shot. And Ooh. then it cuts to an owl hooting. Yeah, that owl That's goes uh, by. Symbolic owl. Of sorts. <laughs> I then I then wrote down, um, Leo is like proper Jason Voorhees here. And then when he he like grabs his arm through the window to grab Bobby and it's like, yep, full on slasher villain. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, it is little to no dialogue, pretty much, at least. Yeah. He matches fairly decently, at least until he gets stabbed in the ankle knee-ish area by the knife. Yeah, he gets stabbed. I think it's in, like, the calf. Up there, there. And it's, like, the weakest fucking stab. Well, enough uh, to stick the main point of the knife in there. Yeah, but it goes it goes in, like, not even half an inch. It looked a little bit more than that, but... It eh. barely... It looked like it barely went in. Hmm. Um, Cooper's cleared of any wrongdoing, but is still suspended. For some reason. So, per- first well, part... Yay! Second part... You know. He did break, like, federal guidelines and stuff about how to handle that. Okay. Yeah. He did... He done fucked up. Yeah. He just didn't commit any crimes, necessarily. Nah. Yeah, they just tried to, you know... Yeah, he's still gonna be punished for his shit. He just didn't do anything, like, illegal. Miserable. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Andy has the rubber glove, and that's just the best thing ever. He's trying to put the rubber glove on, and he can't fucking get it. And he just well, slips onto um, Lucy's window. Yeah. How did it stick to that? How <laughs> sticky and or sweaty were his hands in those gloves? It's Andy, so I'm going to assume very. Yeah, supposedly. Reminded me of the other scene where he had, like, tape all over his hands. Yeah, Andy, uh, Andy is amazing. Mm. Um, we finally meet Jeffrey Marsh, mm. who is Evelyn's husband. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a part of the show. <laughs> Blah. Unfortunate as it is. Uh, Nadine wants to start dating, we find out. <laughs> Which... Uh. I just... I... I... I'm not a big fan of Nadine in season one, but once she goes full on crazy in season two and thinks she's 18, mm. she's one of the best things on the show. Mm. Um, yeah, Donna's off to look for James. Mm. I just really hate James. He's just so bland. Yeah, um, his story finally starts to get somewhat interesting, but it's kind of just a case, you know, you could have avoided this if you just left earlier. Well... I have thoughts on what I wish James would do. But that's beside the point. Uh, we find out that Wyndham and uh, Cooper used to play chess every day for, the, for three years. And where Cooper really, always lost. Yeah. yeah. So he Wyndham always won. goes to get some chess lessons and basically lose even more matches to all the old guys. Um, or is yeah. that the other? So. Well, we find out that Wyndham Earl was Cooper's first partner and Cooper fucked up and Wyndham's wife ended up dead. Most assuredly, yes. Uh, Donna turns up at the bar. Donna turns up at the bar to meet James. The lady that James yeah. has been seeing. And her and Evelyn have a conversation. And then we cut to James doing some really bad moping, and I still don't know why he's on the show still. Mm. But thank God, then we cut to Ben, and the Civil War is in full effect. Jerry is back, and Ben is marching on Washington. God damn it. As Jacoby watches. Yeah. This is, <laughs> Your um, question with Jacoby being the doctor, is he even helping? He's helping. He, yeah, he's... He's helping him win the war. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that you can really do at this point. <laughs> I, I just... It's such a goofy thing to do with Ben Horn, but I just... He just throws himself into it, and it's so much fun. Hmm... I also oh, love how he has cigar. like the all the little plastic figurines and he starts making a speech. <laughs> we band of brothers, we. Um, Major Briggs arrives at the sheriff's station and faints. Yeah. They all then have a glass of water together. Because apparently water cures fainting. Okay. Uh, Major Briggs believes he was taken to the White Lodge and is worried about what his superiors are up to but knows that there's great trouble in the near future, he'll be in the shadows. So, firstly, for the Major, trouble's gonna be supposedly happening. I know, duh! With all the stuff that we've been seeing. Well, it's going to get worse. Of course it is. That's it, um, always. I love the Black Widow angle, because that's where we go to next. It's so much fun, and the oh. bear comes in with a rifle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was like a shotgun. Oh, I didn't really pay attention. Yeah, no. He was not there to talk. I don't want to talk. I want to shoot. I want to shoot. Talk now. You can always shoot later. 
And then they lead him into the room to allow them to talk about it. And I just mildly thought, didn't Cooper say he didn't want the bear going in there with a gun? And they did and all supposedly had it. And I was kind of thinking, okay, is the typical thing going to happen? Or are we going to hear a gunshot in a second? And then like, they leave them in there to talk for 30 seconds. They open the door and he's like, we've decided to adopt a child. <laughs> God damn succubus woman. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I just... Oh, it's fantastic. Um, at this point, Pete finds out that Andrew is still alive. Yes. He's a little bit shocked about that. Thomas Eckert arrives at the Great Northern. Yes. And he is going yes. to become important later on. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Lucy finds out that um, Andy and Dick had been defective detecting around town. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> They're suspicious that little Nicky murdered his parents. And she gets Hayward to come in. And Hayward has the best line in the episode. I did not drop you on your head when I brought you into this world. Don't give me cause to regret that now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it um, was fairly decent. We get Little Nicky's whole tragic backstory. And Andy and Dick just weeping is just, just perfect. I'm not sure about this scene. Oh. As it kind of sits, it all makes sense, and they bring up a decent enough case for Nicky. But something's up with him, oh. whether or not that he knows it or not. Okay. So there's probably a person to keep an eye on. I just wanted to mention that I would watch a spin-off of Andy and Dick as defective detectives. <sighs> what did you always? Does this end their defective detectiving? I think it does, unfortunately. Ah, uh, oh well. <laughs> like I said, I would watch a spin-off of them as detect as defective detectives. But anyway, uh, then we cut back and oh god, no, not more James. What's the point of this? I think mostly just to bring up the fact that. The lady doesn't know what she's thinking. She flip-flops all different directions at this. Because she lied to Donna to start with. It's like, oh, James is gone, drove away. Oh, it's another character that doesn't really make any sense in this plot. Somehow. And then she's like, oh no. Oh no, I don't want all this evil stuff to happen. It's just, lady, no, make up your goddamn your mind pants. to do something. I mean, I want to kill you. I mean, I don't know anymore. I just don't get the point of this whole story, and I've never understood it. Exactly. Anyway, uh, the police arrive at Evelyn's house after her husband was in a car accident. Mm. Uh, James runs off and gets in an accident on his bike and is decapitated. Oh, no, that was just what I wanted to happen. Yeah, no, um, they, they get out of the house and with Donna. Yeah, and Donna takes him to freedom. Um, or something. We go back to Leo, who, not sure was mentioned, but after the whole scuffle at his place, he gets out after being stabbed. Yes. Wandering around in the woods, coming into contact with an owl, and finds the lodge. Well, and right after the owl flies overhead, you'll notice that a storm starts to roll in. Oh, true. Storm stuff started out. Uh, then he discovers the cabin in the woods, like you said, and meets... Windham Earl. Windham Earl. I love how they obscure Wyndham's face for almost the entire reveal of him. Like, you barely see his face in that first. Until, like, the final shot, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. So, David, Justin, what did you learn about Twin Peaks? You know what? You know what the... What Wyndham Earl kind of reminds me of? A little bit? Is it some anime nonsense? No. Good. Um... <laughs> It makes me think of uh, the master from Doctor Who a little bit. Mm. I my Doctor Who knowledge is basically non-existent. So I know. I'm just going to believe you. But basically, the master is like a rather cunning guy who's also a time lord. Basically, the other surviving time lord and whatnot. But he does everything to basically try and get rid of the Doctor or just have his own way. Hmm. And he's kind of egotistical. More so, hmm. Mostly I just saw that all the things are happening. As well as sort of extending a couple little plots that are kind of flying in all directions with the stuff. Yeah, so... 
Who is your favorite character after this episode? Because I have a personal favorite, but did anybody really jump out to you after this episode? As it sort of sits, Audrey still sort of sits as a decent enough character. Definitely did not like her during the start, but in the right circumstances, she can definitely be fairly decent. Pete's always a joy to see when it comes to those things. I... Not really sure what to sort of say about it, but I question some of the reactions he has. Because I definitely could see on his face that he was happy to see um, Andrew. Andrew back. But I couldn't help but notice little twinges of his mind working on something else additionally. And I don't know what. Yeah, well, I mean, so part of that is probably him trying to figure out how they faked the death. Possibly... Uh, but again, it's just or, sort of or a like, thought that sort of ran through Or also, like, death. what their motivation would have been for faking his death. Mm. And then, of course, Cooper, Andy, pretty much everyone within the sheriff crew is just always a joy to watch. Yeah, so, Justin, do you have a personal favorite? Um, personal favorite so far, I still have to say Cooper would be my favorite still. Even though he hasn't had much of a role in this plot recently, but, like, I wanted to see more of where he's going to end up going, probably even later episodes. <laughs> okay, so for me, it's quite obvious. I adore Ben in these episodes where he goes insane. Because <sighs> I just, there's just something about him being a Civil War Southern general that's just, it's too funny. I also love Andy and Dick together as the defective detectives. That's just fantastic as well. Uh, so, do either of you have any questions for me after this episode? No, I had a mild thought near the end of the episode. Is this the Black Lodge? Is it a physical place? It's like, no, that wouldn't make any sense. This is most likely just a show. Oh my gosh, it's Wyndham Earl. I'll then take him to the... Lodge where Windham Merle was staying at. Didn't it was mostly just an owl flew by. Just an owl that well, flew by. Well, we don't know for sure. It could the owl could have like directed Leo to go there, mm. perhaps. Because we know that there there is something about the owls. Well, of course there is. They're not what they seem. Yeah. All right. Um. So, do either of you have any last minute thoughts, Dad? Yeah, it's all clear on me. No, not right now. Alrighty, so I think that's going to be it for this episode. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And Justin.